This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 186. Asking the Right Questions by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And I'm your host, Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Monday, a very happy April. Welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily. If you're new here, this is the podcast where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs out there. Now, I don't know if anyone played an April Fool's joke on you, but my wife likes to do this to me. I always forget every year that she likes to play these pranks on me. Now, she and I are in a place in our lives right now where we really don't want kids at this point. My nieces and nephews keep us pretty busy, and so that's perfectly fine for us. Plus, my wife's a toddler teacher, so she gets her fill of kids, and for me right now, I'm just too busy to give all of my love to something else. So this year, her prank was, guess what? I'm pregnant. I nearly fell out of my chair, forgetting it was April Fool's Day. She got me really, really good, needless to say. She's so mean to me sometimes. Anywho, we now have a Facebook group where we do extra book giveaways, share some more tips and articles, and allow you to connect with more people who are fans of our podcasts. The shortcut link is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. Or you can always search in Facebook for Optimal Living Daily Podcasts, and the group should pop up and you can request to join. I'll give you another quick reminder about that at the end of the episode because I know you're really eager to hear from Steve Pavlina. So let's jump right into today's post and start optimizing your life. Asking the Right Questions by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Tony Robbins says that thinking is a process of asking and answering questions. He stresses the importance of asking the right questions to get the right answers and therefore, the right results. I agree with him. Most people ask lousy questions that cripple their results. Lousy questions turn your focus away from what you want and towards more of what you don't want. And since we ask and answer mental questions every day, our questions wield great power over our results. Here are some examples of weak questions versus strong questions. Upon waking up early, weak question. Can I fall back asleep again? Should I go back to bed? Strong question. What would be the best way to start my day? How can I energize myself? Where can I find something inspirational or motivational to read right now? When contemplating exercise and feeling unmotivated. Weak question. Is it too hot or too cold to exercise? Can I skip it for today? What difference will it make if I just skip a day? Don't I deserve a day off? Strong question. Won't it feel great hitting the showers afterwards? What should I listen to while I work out? Won't it be wonderful to achieve my fitness goals? How can I make this session more fun? When considering a dietary improvement. Weak question. What foods am I gonna have to give up? How am I gonna deal with the deprivation? Am I gonna have to eat like this forever? Strong question. What foods that I like will I get to eat more of? What new foods can I experiment with? Won't it be great when I reach my goal weight? Won't it be wonderful to finally master this area of my life once and for all? Once I succeed at this, who else can I help? Nearing the end of the workday. Weak question. Have I done enough that I can justify quitting for the day? Is this a good time to stop? Can I finish this tomorrow? Strong question. What's next? How can I complete one more task? How much more can I get done today? When spending time with the kids. Weak question. Why do I have to do so much childcare? How can I keep the kids from draining my energy this evening? What's the bare minimum I can do to keep them out of my hair? How early can I put them to bed? Strong question. What can I do with the kids that will leave me feeling energized? What do I appreciate most about my kids? What would I enjoy doing with them this evening? What would happen if I let my kids direct how we spend our time together? When facing an unfamiliar social situation. Weak question. How can I avoid looking like an idiot? What should I talk about? How can I keep from being too nervous or too shy? How did I get myself into this situation? Can I get out of going? Strong question. Won't it be fun to meet some interesting new people? If I see someone there who's a bit shy, what can I do to make him or her feel more comfortable? What can I expect others at this event to have in common with me? When feeling depressed, anxious, or otherwise negative. Weak question. Why do I feel so down? Why can't I just be happy? How come I never get any time to myself? 
Strong question. What can I do to energize myself? Who can I talk to that would help cheer me up? What can I read or listen to that would inspire me? Are these feelings trying to tell me something? Should I go journal about them? How long can I hold a fake smile before it forces me to start feeling good again? So what's the difference? Weak questions are disempowering. They keep your focus on your own ego, your problems, and your shortcomings. Weak questions keep you focused on what's wrong, on what isn't working. That might seem like a good idea, but all it does is further reinforce the situation you'd like to change. Weak questions will lead your brain to come up with answers that are useless, circular, or even destructive. Yet weak questions are addictive. At first glance, they may even seem helpful, and that's why they're so insidious. You might think that if you're depressed, the best thing you can do is to ask, why am I so depressed? I mean, perhaps if you could diagnose the problem, you could cure it, but it doesn't work that way. When you're in a negative state or situation, you aren't thinking clearly to begin with, so you're in no position to accurately diagnose yourself. Effectively, you're blind. So the answers you get back will be worthless. At best, you'll merely come up with a temporary solution, but the underlying condition will remain, and the problem will simply submerge and crop up again later, sometimes in a different form. Asking why you're depressed merely feeds your depression. In answering the why question, now you've added a story on top of your depression. That goes way beyond acknowledging your depression and trying to do something about it. Strong questions, on the other hand, are empowering. They keep you focused on solutions and on what you can control. When you focus on what you can do, you avoid falling into analysis paralysis. Ultimately, the way out of any negative situation is right thinking. Wrong thinking leads you in circles. Right thinking leads to action. Going back to the depression example, the first thing you need to do is get yourself to a more positive emotional state. And with practice, that can be done in a matter of minutes, even seconds if you've studied NLP. Strong questions will help you shift your focus away from depression and the thoughts that reinforce it and towards action. When you focus too much thought on what you can't control and don't like, depression is a natural consequence. When you ask different questions to focus on what you can control and what you like, depression will lift. Mediocre results largely come about from asking mediocre questions. Great results come from asking great questions. If you don't like the results you're getting, try asking completely different questions from the ones you're used to asking. Ask questions that turn your focus towards your goals instead of away from them. Ask questions that allow you to enhance the pleasure in your life instead of creating greater pain. You just listened to the post titled Asking the Right Questions by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. When we look at stress and depression, what we found is really a lack of control or a feeling that an individual is not in control of their own lives. And that's what Steve mentioned in his post. I'll reread one of his sentences here. When you focus too much thought on what you can't control and don't like, depression is a natural consequence. He's right in the sense that, again, if we think too much about all the things we can't control, throw up our hands and say, well, I give up, I can't control these things anyways, yeah, increased stress and depression are likely to occur. I wanna share with you a very useful tip that a psychologist will charge you $250 an hour for. Here's a way to really look at the things in your life, the events in your life, and try and get control over those to empower you. When you get a moment, if you're driving, don't do this right now, obviously, write down the top three, four, five, whatever stresses in your life at this moment. It could be your job. It could be your kids. It could be money, whatever it is. But I want you to be specific. So when you finally do get around to doing this, be as specific as possible when you write your stressors down. After you write each of those down, look at them and say, okay, for number one, Do I have control over this situation? Can I do something about this? The answer may be a quick yes, it may be a quick no, or it could be a maybe. Either way, write one of those words next to that particular stressor. So if you do say no, then you need to make a decision right now to tell yourself, if I have no control over this situation, I am no longer going to let it upset me anymore. Here's a great example, traffic. Here in Southern California, Los Angeles has actually been ranked as the worst traffic in the continental United States. So we are constantly dealing with lots and lots of traffic, something that we really can't control. 
If you know there's gonna be traffic, which if you live in LA or Southern California, you know it's gonna be there, then why get upset over it every single time? You have no control, let it go. For those that you said, yes, I do have control, or maybe I have some control, what's stopping you from exerting that control? That's what you need to think about. If you have some control over it, take control and do something about it. Now, like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can be in bonus book raffles, connect with more people, and get extra tips and motivation in our Facebook group. The shortcut link is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. Or you can do a search inside of Facebook for Optimal Living Daily Podcasts. And the group will likely come up and you can request to join. We'd love to see you in there. That's it for today's show. Thank you again so much for listening. I'll see you tomorrow with some cooking tips actually and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.